So let's look at the queue. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the circular queue. And then in another video, we're going to have a look at the priority queue. So to introduce the queue, we, we're attempting to model the behavior of a normal queue, like we would queue up to uh, get a bus ticket or queue up to get into a concert or queue up to get into a venue. Uh, we're modeling that behavior where a person or an item joins the queue from the back of the queue and then the first person or item in line is then served or removed from the queue. So as people are removed from the queue, the items move down and eventually once the person who joined at the back of the queue gets to the front and is then removed from the queue. So we refer to this principle as first in, first out, or abbreviated to FIFO, meaning that the first person in the queue is the first one to exit the queue. Okay, and, um, and when we come to model the queue in code, we uh, refer to these operations uh, sometimes through different names. Um, to join the queue is known as to be inserted into the queue, or uh, sometimes referred to as n queuing. And to exit the queue is otherwise known as being removed from the queue, or alternatively, dequeued or dequeuing. And also in code, we have pointers to the first person or item in the queue, which is also known as the front of the queue or the head of the queue. And then we also have a pointer to the last person in the queue, the person who has just joined the queue, which is known as the rear or the, the tail or the back of the queue. Okay, so the data structure that we're going to be implementing a queue with in this week's exercises is the array. But of course, a queue could be implemented with other data structures as well, such as linked lists or, or vectors. We're, we're going to look at linked lists next week and we'll implement a queue with a linked list then. Okay, but for now, we're gonna stick with an array. And so let's look at how to do that. So as the array is indexed, we can create two variables which point towards the first item in the queue, the front of the queue, and also the last item in the queue, the, the rear of the queue. And then we can update the values of these pointers, the indexes, that is, of this array. Um, if, say, we remove the person or the item at the front of the queue, we can update the front pointer from zero to one. And we can also do the same when we insert an item into the queue. We can also increment the rear pointer as well. And by maintaining two pointers, this prevents us from having to adjust the positions of these elements in the array as they are inserted and removed from the queue. Because of course with an array, it is, it is possible to shift the elements, but of course that means we have to move them every single time, which is costly in terms of uh, time taken to do these operations and not very efficient. So it's actually far better and far more efficient to maintain pointers. And that leads us nicely into the circular queue, which is a way to prevent us from exceeding the size of the array. Because, of course, remember that arrays are declared of a fixed size. We can't expand or contract them uh, dynamically like we can do with linked lists that we're going to see in the uh, next week's video. Okay, so to avoid exceeding the size of the array, we can actually wrap round the start of the, of the queue. Because as we remove items from the queue, these initial elements, elements 0 and 1, become available. They are freed up. Uh, the values in them get deleted. Or we could actually just overwrite them with values at the ends of the queue. Okay, so you'll notice here on the diagram how the, uh, the rear pointer is at the max, maximum element of the array, but then because the zero element is free, the rear pointer then changes from the last element of the array to become the first element of the array. And because we've got a pointer to that last element, we can still insert values um, after that element. We still increment the rear pointer. And we can also still remove items from the front pointer as well, and then increment that subsequently. Okay, so let's take a step back and 
consider the step-by-step -step operations for inserting items into the queue. So you'll see on the furthest left-hand side, we've got an empty queue with the front pointer set to zero and the rear pointer set to minus one. So when we insert an item into the queue, we actually increment the value of rear from minus one to become zero, which follows the zero elements of the array, the basically the first elements. And um, then if we were to perform another insert, we then increment the value of rear again from zero to one, and then insert that value, the new value, into element one of the array. Okay, and you notice that front remains constant at zero until we remove an item from the queue. And you'll notice here in this example that uh, with a, a full queue on the left-hand side that um, the items are actually being deleted. So the array elements are actually being reset to an empty element. Okay, and you notice how the, the front pointer is now incrementing every time we remove an item. It changes from zero to become one on the furthest left. So when we remove element zero, we then update the front pointer from zero to one. And then we continue doing so as we remove the items from the queue. And then, as we said earlier, when it comes to implementing a circular queue, which involves wrapping round the start of the queue, once the rear pointer is equal to the array size minus one, we then make the value of the rear pointer zero. So it wraps around uh, the start of the queue and then starts inserting values at the start of the array, but they're still regarded to be the back of the queue because we also update the rear pointer to become that value as well. And then of course we continue as normal. The front still stays the same and items are still inserted from the rear because we increment the, the value of the rear pointer as we go. So this is probably where we would uh, call a method to check whether that first element of the array is indeed available to wrap around. Okay, so in the next video, we'll have a look at implementing a circular queue. And then in the following video, we will look at the priority queue. Right, so let's get started with implementing a circular queue, first of all. So I'm going to create a class for the queue. Let's call it queue. And uh, we've been given the UML class diagram to implement. So let's create the queue to that specification. We've got uh, a series of private uh, attributes. Here we've got uh, an integer variable for the count. Uh, we've got a pointer to the uh, data, which in our queue here, we're going to be implementing an array. And then we've got a another variable for pointing to the front of the queue. And then likewise, one for pointing to the rear of the queue and then the size of the queue, which will be the total number of elements uh, of the array. Okay, so that's the attributes. And then onto the methods, we've got, uh, let's implement the uh, constructor first. So as always, same name as the class. And it's, uh, it's a, um, it's a non-default constructor, this particular one, so it's going to have a variable. I'm going to take in the, the size of the, of the array, uh, and uh, we'll be given some notes to follow here. So um, let's first of all assign the uh, parameter size to our class variable size, just to um, instant initialize that. Uh, and then we've got to instantiate the um, array, which is data. So that's going to be a um, allocate, we're going to allocate a new block of memory for that. And we're going to specify how much memory by writing size in between the square brackets there, the subscript operator. And uh, then we're just going to initialize 
front to zero, uh, set rear to minus one, and count to zero. Okay, so that's the constructor there. Um, next, implement peak front. Okay, so let's do that. Peak front, uh, which is going to return the front element of data. So that should just be return data front. Okay, we're not actually going to remove that front item from the uh, queue. We just want to look and see what the value is. Okay. Uh, next we've got is empty, which is um, returns boolean. Okay, and um, this is just going to return true or false depending upon whether the queue is empty or not. So if uh, the count is zero, then return true. Uh, else uh, return false. Okay, so that's a fairly straightforward one. Uh, and then we got something. We got another similar method for uh, is full, which again is going to follow a very similar pattern. If the uh, if it, um, if the count, if the number of elements that we've assigned to the queue is the same value as size, then we know we must have reached the um, the queue must be full. So return true, and then else return false. Okay, well, let's just add in. Oops. Uh, sorry about that. That's. Add in that there. About sync. Don't actually need the brackets. <laughs> I can get away without them, but uh, just for just for completeness, I'll include them there. Okay. And um, what's next? Implement size. So this should just return the uh, value of size. So that should just be return size. Or if you want to be specific, we could say this arrow link size. All right, so that should be those. Um, let's go on and quickly implement exercise one to get us started. We also need to implement the insert methods. So I'm just going to check my email diagram for the signature. That's got a void return type. And then insert, that takes parameter int item and uh, within this insert method we're given the pseudocode um, here so here we go so if rear it's the same value as size minus one i right at the end then we want to wrap around and so, oh sorry rear equals minus one. Okay, and then increment rear by one. So that's just rear plus plus. Um, and then, yep, yeah, insert that item at the start again to wrap around to there. And then increment count as well. Okay, so that should be uh, the code you need for exercise one then. Um, have a go at the other two exercises, exercise two and three, uh, where you have to implement the remove uh, method, which is uh, you're given the signature up above. Um, and, uh, and then from there, once you've implemented uh, remove, um, create an instance of the queue in main and um, then try adding some items, inserting them into the queue, and then uh, removing them and uh, printing them to screen. Okay, so see how you get on with those exercises. Okay, so hopefully by now you've implemented the circular queue exercises. So in the second half of this lecture, we're going to have a look at the priority queue. 
with a circular queue, we didn't have to pay attention to the size or the value of the item that we were inserting. But with a priority queue, these items are actually going to be inserted in a specific order into the queue. They're actually going to be sorted by some kind of metric, whether that's an ID number, whether that's a particular weighting, a particular priority um, for which we want to order these items in the queue. And for the example covered in the slides here, we're actually going to be sorting our items by an integer key. We're going to be moving the items with a lower integer key to the front of the queue so they can be removed first. And then items with a higher integer key will be moved to the back of the queue. And so considering the performance of our priority queue, the, the, rem the remove operation will stay the same. That's going to be done in constant time because we're always going to be removing from the front pointer. That's going to be the same regardless of how big the uh, array is that we're implementing here. But uh, the performance of insertion now, because we're going to be having to sort the items as we insert, we may have to move some of the items in the array further down. And therefore the time taken to insert items in a sorted manner is going to be linear time, which if you remember, Linear time means that the time taken to implement these operations is going to be proportional to the size of the data structure. So performing operations on an array of five elements will take much less time than performing the operations on an array of, say, 5,000 elements or 5 million elements, because that time taken is going to add up for every element that uh, the operation has to be performed on. Okay, so with this in mind, Let's look at the steps we need to take in order to insert items in a sorted manner. Okay then, so the process of inserting starts off as we're used to it. Uh, we can insert the value of 5 and then 8 directly afterwards. But when we come to inserting the value 6, it's at this point we're going to have to use a different insertion algorithm. Providing that the number we're inserting is greater than the rear of the queue, we can then put it after the last element of the queue. But if the element we want to insert is no longer greater than the last element of the queue, we're going to have to insert it at some point between two of the items already in the queue. The value that we want to insert with each item in the queue and then insert it at the location where it is no longer greater than the current item we're looking at. And then once we've found that location, we then have to move the item that is currently in that location and all of the items underneath it. We need to shift those items down an element so that we can create a space to insert the item we want to that's going to be in order, keeping with the, the current list of items. Okay, so it's this process that's going to have to happen every time we insert a new item into the queue. Okay, but the good news is that the front of the queue will always be the same because we're pushing all of the lowest value items, in this case anyway, to the front of the queue and then removing them from there. So we're also freeing up space at the front of the queue as well. So we could actually modify the algorithm I stated earlier to move items further down towards the front of the queue to create space, to insert a new value, say, mid-list if we, if we need to. So with this in mind, in the next video, we're going to have a look at implementing a priority queue. Right, so let's implement the priority queue. And uh, we've got a, a class diagram again. So let's create a new class and implement this class diagram. I'm going to call it priority queue. And uh, let's set up the class structure. Okay, we've got three private attributes this time. We haven't got the front and rear pointers. Instead, we've just got uh, one for the counts and the items in the data structure, which is we're still using an array. And then we've got a pointer to the array that is called data. 
and then we've got another variable to keep track of how many elements there are in that array. So that's the attributes. Let's have a look at the methods. And the first one we've got to implement is the constructor. So it's another non-default constructor. It's going to take the size and into that. So as as we did last time, let's um, assign that parameter to the class variable size. Uh, similar again, similar to last time, we've got to instantiate the array. So we'll say uh, data equals new int of size, and then set uh, the count to zero. Okay. So next we have peak min. Check the uh, class diagram. Uh, return type int. Okay. So this. Uh, just returns count minus one. So that will be return data count minus one to uh, get the last element of the, of the array. Uh, and next we have is empty. So this should be the same as previous. Um, let's do it even more efficiently as well this time. Let's just say return um, true if count is equal to zero. And then if the evaluation is false, it will return false. Okay, and then we can do the same for is full. So boot is full. And um, that's just going to be return size equals count. Okay, so that returns true if uh, the count is the same value of size and then returns false if uh, we're not at the maximum number of elements in the in the array. And then again, similar to last time, we've got a, another method which just returns size. So we could say that, or we could be more specific and say this arrow link size. Um, and then we've got uh, remove. Okay, so that's that's got a return type of integer. And um, oops. And uh, then we need to decrement count and then return the removed item. Yes, I believe it's that. Okay, so let's um, move on to the next exercise then, exercise four. And uh, we've got to implement the pseudocode for the insert method. So let's check the signature for that. It's going to be void insert and then adding an integer item. Okay. And then we've been given the pseudo code. So if the queue is empty, we can say, uh, here's where we can call the is empty method. If is empty is true. then we want to set element zero to item. So let's say data zero is going to be the first one, first item that we're adding. And then increment counts to uh, move on. Uh, and then otherwise, if the Q is not empty. Then we want to set up a, a loop. Uh, yes, I think we can do a standard for loop. Starting at J for some reason, but uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Oh, and we're not starting at zero. We're starting at count minus one. 
just going to put that within a pair of brackets just to avoid any possible confusion. Um, so then that's going to be repeating whilst we are not less than but greater than uh, zero. And we want to get to the last element as well. So we need to put greater than or equal to zero. And then it's we're not be, it's not plus plus, it's gonna be minus minus from there. Okay. because uh, we're counting down from the top to the bottom. So from there, uh if the item is greater than looped item J. So that'll be where we're currently in the sequence. Then we want to say, uh, then we want to move element J plus one. So that's going to be destination. Moved that looped item data J and assign it there. Okay, yeah, because we want to move it down. All right. Um, and then otherwise, once we reach the end, want to break out the loops. That should just be a break statement. Um, end loop and then set element j plus one to item. So that's where we'll say data j plus one equals item and then increment count. And if um, Oh, oh yes, because it's not defined. So tell you what, let's define it here, and then take that up there. Okay. All right then. So this should be the pseudocode for um, uh, in inserting. So give that a try, see if that works, and then um, uh, move on to exercise five, where we're to implement a um, implement this and then add six items and then see if we can remove them okay and, and display them in uh, just ascending order so um, give that a try and uh, see how you get on